Hi everybody, we're back. This is Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org, and this is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's continuous coverage of Dell World, wall-to-wall -wall coverage. We bring you the signal from the noise, we extract it, we bring it to you, our community. We're here in Austin, Texas, what a great city. Uh, a lot of action, a lot of mojo. 5,000 people here at Dell World. This is the second Dell World, and uh, Dell brings its customers in. We, we're hearing strong messaging around convergence, end-to-end, -end, you know, a, a, a real commitment you know, to the PC business, unlike HP, which you know, you really don't hear them talking too much about the PC at these big events because you know, as they talk about them selling up, there's no question that Dell really wants to use its supply chain leverage at scale to really drive that into the enterprise. And we're going to talk about that, we're going to talk about networking. Uh, I'm Dave Vellante at Wikibon, I'm here with my co-host. And this is Stu Miniman, also with Wikibon.org, lead networking analyst with Wikibon. Tra ca ca uh, tracking all the trends in the space, what we call the software-led infrastructure. One of the major disruptors, of course, is SDN. And joining us for this segment is Armagan Ahmad, who's the global VP of networking sales with, H with, uh, with Dell. I'm sorry, uh, Armagan's actually a Cube alum from a previous company where he's done networking, so yeah. welcome back to theCUBE. Thanks, uh, uh, glad to be here. Great, yeah. so uh, if we, we look at networking, uh, you know, it's an exciting time. As we said uh, in the industry, uh, you know, for so long Cisco's dominated, some big trends out there are helping to make networking a little bit more sexy and interesting. Uh, things like, uh, you know, converged infrastructure or in software-defined networking, yeah. uh, and with the acquisition of Force 10, Dell had already had networking, but now Dell's a, Dell's a bigger player. Uh, depending on whether what segments of the market you look at, uh, I think what, what I heard from your folks is overall you're number four in the market, and if you look just at 10 and 40 gig, which is where all the growth is, uh, it's number three in the market. So, uh, you know, Dell's definitely, as Dave said, accelerating the growth using its supply chain, so, uh, bring us up to speed, you know, what, what's new with Dell networking and uh, what do you attribute that growth to? Yeah, you know, uh, Dell's networking business has been growing for seven consecutive quarters since we have uh, bought Force 10. It's been, uh, it's been a great, uh, great growth story for us. So it's not just uh, networking as a me too vendor to some of the you know, legacy networking providers. We're, we're looking to change the industry. We find that you know, the industry uh, started off with the first wave, which was more from mainframes, and you, know, you had token ring, and you had a lot of vendors who were no longer you know, there. But then it went to the second wave, which is client server, and then that required a three-tier type of architecture. And then in the third wave, as it comes in with convergence, cloud, and virtualization, we're finding that that's really the differentiation that Dell can provide. You, you, know, you referenced uh, Stu, that um, uh, Dell's known for supply chain advantages and value advantages. We're essentially trying to drive our server storage networking uh, in, a, in a converged infrastructure format that we call active uh, infrastructure. And that allows networking to become a common denominator, and it actually connects it all together. So we're excited about it. It's, uh, it's been a great, uh, a great growth story for us that actually helps us um, uh, yeah, protect our server and storage business. As you know, some of our competitors are also talking about server storage and networking all together. So we feel we have some clear differentiations. And I, I've just, uh, you know, I've been here two days and we've been meeting with incredible amount of, we have 5,000 customers here and uh, some great feedback on, on how, how our traction is right now. Great, so, so we, we've talked a lot with some of your convergence people. So yeah. Dario was telling us the momentum there and yeah. obviously that packages some of the networking. Where else is Dell being successful in the networking space? Why are customers choosing Dell and what, what differentiates you in the yeah. marketplace? So you know, uh, we, we take a look at uh, our differentiation to be not just uh, take a me too approach, uh, actually design a, a different network. So either you can take a pure play network or you can uh, take a converged uh, infrastructure approach. So from a pure play network perspective, rather than going through you know your traditional three tiers and going down to a two tier, one tier, I know a lot of other vendors are doing something similar, but we don't take, uh, for example, uh, the, the big set seven foot high chassis based approach, right? So what we did was we actually went to a distributed core architecture, which is uh, very dense uh, in terms of ports. So it, it's got the uh, 128 ports of 10 gig and it's got the 40 gig capability. And now that we've added VLT on top of that and it gives the fault tolerance, we're seeing uh, a good adoption across manufacturing vertical. Public sector is a big adoption for us. Uh, healthcare with our solutions with BYOD on the edge of the network, but also at the, uh, at the data center side on how they can uh, they can take advantage of it. I, I would also say, Stu, that uh, 
uh, our, our approach of taking virtualization on where a lot of that traffic we know, you and I were talking earlier, that you know it actually does connect uh, uh, east-west traffic, uh, which is uh, currently uh, about 50% of every server uh, that's out there is getting virtualized, and uh, Gartner's predicting that by 2016 it would be 80% of the servers will be virtualized. So you do need to architect the network in a unique way, and we, uh, and we feel that you know, our virtual network architecture, that, uh, that's our framework, that allows us to uh, differentiate with the distributed core, and then actually take that distributed core fabric and bring it all the way inside our Blade Server chassis uh, that I'm sure Dario would have talked about with you earlier, uh, where you essentially take our Blade Server, which is already, uh, you know, as uh, as you know, we're uh, we're very close uh, uh, to becoming number one for for our server market share, and and how we're uh, how we're actually taking advantage of our Blade Servers with the M1000E Blade Server technology, and you can now take a Ecologic iSCSI array and put that directly into the chassis, and then you can now take the Force 10, uh, uh, 10 gig and the 40 gig blade and, and layer two, fully, function, uh, fully functioning layer two, layer three, put that in. And then you have the server that can be managed by Active Systems Manager, and that's a big differentiation for us. And yeah. I'm, I'm hearing some good feedback from the customers. No, no, we, we, we've seen a good progression. So first yeah. of all, on the architecture standpoint, yeah. absolutely a differentiator for Dell, is yeah. if I look at you know the Cisco's or Juniper's of the world, uh, it, it's really more of a scale up architecture. Yeah. That they've got technologies that do the Ethernet fabrics, uh, Brocade kind of in the same camp too. Uh, you guys are really much more of a scale out architecture, not only on the network, but that really matches with what you've done on the storage with things like Equalogic, and even on the compute side, where uh, Dell's much more likely to sell you know a thousand you know smaller servers than so, some of the big ones. It really just is kind of in your DNA. Um, you know, so sometimes it's a lower margin thing, yeah. um, but you know that that fits well and it's actually I think an advantage long term, especially in some of the service provider markets and web companies. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, uh, service providers and web uh, companies uh, tend to do a lot of business with us. Uh, uh, you know, with Dell with our servers and storage, but it's also this design is is also ready for a lot of headroom, right? It gives you the capability as software-defined networking starts to kick into gear. And you know, you start to see a very similar adoption rate to what VMware saw with virtualization and as SDN starting to become more pervasive, you're seeing acquisitions that uh, that every company around the world is making around, uh, around uh, building out their software-defined networking uh, capability. We're taking an approach to say, we, we've always been standards-based, but we're saying that it, it can actually be uh, two-fold software-defined networks. You can either go through a controller-based approach, or you can go through a hypervisor-based approach. I mean, you saw the VMware acquisition uh, of NICERA in of terms of what they did at the hypervisor to actually make it even more uh, more important. We're working very closely with a lot of our uh, hypervisor vendors to see how we can uh, try to uh, bridge our distributor uh, core fabric architecture that actually is now, as you said, going into our Blade Server chassis with uh, with the Ecologic iSCSI as well. And 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 we feel that the customers are saying that they want uh, they want to really focus on their uh, priorities. If you're a manufacturing car manufacturing, you know, company, you you really want to focus on if you can get a car out, uh, maybe you know, it comes out every four minutes. They can get a car out every three minutes uh, at the end of their supply chain. And and if we can make the server storage and networking more of a consolidative way for them to manage and for them to have resources that can also you know manage it more effectively, I think that goes a long that goes a long way with customers. Yeah. So so, so on on the on the SDN piece though, you know, yeah. you're, you're guys in the field selling this product. Yeah. You know what. What's the discussions they're having with customers today? What's the feedback? Are customers, you know, ready to listen to that message? Uh, and uh, you know, along that same uh, track, you know, you know, how are they changing organizationally? Um, you know, it's been traditionally network guys. Yeah. Uh, is, uh, I, you know, really resonated with me when Michael Dell was saying, you know, you know, if you're managing ports and you know configuring VLANs today, yeah. you know, you're going to need to change. So, you know, yeah. what's that reality in the field? You know, where are customers today? Yeah. So today, I mean, you know, I'm sure uh, you know you talk to enough customers as I do, and you know, customers still have a lot of their um, uh, uh, silos with servers. Uh, uh, you know, server people responsible for servers and storage people, and then you've got the network folks, and then they've got the software and application folks. So I think it's starting first with um, a, uh, a network decision maker to a server decision maker to a storage decision maker actually coming together themselves and saying, hey, you know, let, let us actually bring this all together and see if we can bring down the number of resources we need to manage the server and the storage and networking and virtualization. So it starts with that first. And I think you know a lot of customers uh, are, are very focused on uh, uh, CIOs that I talked to just today, they're, they're very focused on consolidating that approach so that they can, they can have that one lens view so that then they can talk about workloads 
and automation versus saying, uh, you know, what, uh, how much VMs you have on your server and can the network traffic, you know, handle that or not considering how much is going east-west now. But then software-defined networking is also something that I, I think that comes uh, also with it where they're starting to say the control plane and the data plane discussion of, uh, you know, uh, you know all the chip vendors are still very much of a control plane and data plane altogether, but eventually as that starts to separate out and you either go through a controller-based approach or, or a hypervisor-based approach, uh, I think those customers are starting to have those discussions and we're certainly part of those discussions, yeah. Great, Dave, you had a question. So, <laughs> I wanted to talk a little bit about um, a couple things. First of all, you sell a lot of stuff to the cloud. Yeah. Right? You're kind of an arms dealer for the cloud. Uh, but you've got your own cloud offerings. Mm. So talk about how that all works. I mean, yeah. what that discussion is like. Because um, you guys are big, you play in all these different sectors. Yeah. You know, we have this competition going on. So, um, so share with us how that all sure. shakes out. Sure. So, you know, from a sales uh, approach perspective, Steve Police, who's our uh, chief commercial sales officer, and you know, we've got a worldwide approach to uh, really going in front of a customer and having a broader discussion with a customer versus just a networking discussion or a server or storage discussion. Um, you know, we have a very, very uh, succinct advantage uh, in the market where we uh, touch the customer directly. We create a lot of value with the customer, and that that discussion helps us. Uh, not only just talk about cloud, actually start with a server storage and networking discussion and say, Mr. Customer, we can actually help you uh, develop your own private cloud. Because you know some of the technologies, for example, we just uh, acquired Gale Technologies uh, under Marius Haas, Haas's leadership uh, as, as of the last few weeks. And, and that, again, helps us move more up towards a subscription-based model or a deployment model that a customer can, can go out and deploy. So, you know, as we take our sales go-to-market uh, with uh, having a direct relationship with a customer uh, and leveraging that and leveraging our partners to go in and, and bring the whole ecosystem uh, together, that, that seems to be our advantage. So, the other question I had is, you know, if you look at the networking business, so it's just dominated by Cisco, right? Yeah. We get like two thirds of the marketplace, which is, well first of all, you know, why is that and how has that been sustainable? And and the third, I guess the third, I'm going to ask you three, four questions sure. in one, but is this whole software defined yeah. and converged infrastructure, is that going to, potentially break the stranglehold that Cisco has on the market share. Yeah. So, you know, uh, as, as I was uh, telling Stu, it's, I think uh, uh, this networking industry in the last 20 years, it's evolving, it's going through a lot of transitions. If you look at the first wave, which was 80s and 90s, it was mainframe based and you saw a lot of companies that were around, like Ableton and Freecom and Novell and Digital and, you know, uh, Bay Networks and others. And, and, that, uh, and then there was a second transition that took place and that was really, you know, in the late 90s to 2000s and it was more about the ethernet standard. And it, but it was done in a client-server environment, and and you know uh, competitors such as Cisco did really well at it, and they owned a good chunk of the market share. But now, as there is a third wave that's taking place, because that requires a very different way of architecting a network, because customers and and the data is not flowing north-south anymore. It doesn't go from a client to a server. I mean, it's flattening. Uh, yeah, it's flattening, right? So it's actually going virtual, and when the servers are talking to each other and users are actually talking within the servers, the network needs to be re-architected. And, and we find that this is the perfect opportunity for Dell to, to, uh, to essentially provide a value proposition like virtual network architecture, where we say that you can actually create a distributed core architecture from you know, the traditional ways of doing things, which are big, big honking chassis that take a lot of power and cooling, by the way, right? And, and a lot of the adoption that we're seeing, for example, you know, some really market-leading uh, web tech companies in China, uh, also in, uh, in, the, uh, in the Western US and Europe, where they're taking, I mean some of these customers have 60,000 servers in their environment, physical servers, and for them to architect it using that first wave and second wave is a challenge. And, and when they're deploying it with this distributed core fabric that we have now provided uh, as, a, as, as just a data center network rollout, they find a huge advantage uh, where it's sort of one-fourth the power consumption versus our competitor. Uh, it's one-fifth the cost of our competitor in, the, in a like-for-like -like situation. And then it's one-sixth the packaging and the footprint. So just think of the headroom that we're able to give a customer, and then we don't stop there. Uh, we then take it to a converged fabric when the customers are ready to take their server storage and networking and put it all together, and then really get it managed by one single pane of glass management. So are you, yeah. are you suggesting that you don't need that core you know, capability to compete in the marketplace? Yeah. I mean, people I, say, oh, well, Dell lacks the core. So you're saying yeah. you can compete with that essentially virtual core, yeah. distributed core, yeah, uh, and replicate the capabilities of the the big guys. 
I think it will take some adoption. Uh, we're already finding many major customers, uh, uh, Fortune 500 to 100 to SMB, mid-market type customers adopting this because mm -hmm. they, they, and it's not just in greenfield environments, because we have a standards-based approach, uh, they tend to say that, hey, you, you know, can it work uh, it, with their existing infrastructure? Uh, can it work with Cisco? Can it work with Juniper? Do you have uh, similar CLIs or not? And our CLI, command line interface, is very, very similar to you know, our competitors. So it, it makes it very easy for them to transition, but then as soon as we start talking to them about you know, the headroom that we would give them and the opportunity they have to then actually get ready for the control plane and data plane discussion, which then uh, drives the software-defined networking, right. that becomes a big differentiation for us. Right. Yeah. So, so Armagon, yeah. we're, we're running out of time here. I do have one last question for you, big data. Okay. So you know, big data, there's been a little bit of debate in the industry yeah. as to you know, the kind of buffers and architectures and how you put it together. So you know, what, what are you seeing in the field? You know, how, how is networking affected by big data in, yeah. in, in uh, you know, Dell's estimation? Yeah, Stu, that's a, that's a big focus at Dell. Uh, you talked to some of our Quest uh, counterparts, um, the, you know, where we have brought in our uh, Quest software tools, but it's, it's really, big data is in two folds. I mean, you essentially take a look at the data that's there and how you analyze this data, or the data that's there, how do you actually get access to the data in real time, and how you communicate that data. So I would say there's, uh, uh, big data analytics that's required, which is more behavior-based analysis that you can look at and see how you can make sense of the big data uh, that, that you have. Uh, because the trends where you know Stu and Armagon will send emails to each other, it's sort of become the thing of the past, and maybe you know I'll post on your Facebook and you on mine and Twitter, and how do you know how many people have read it, and how do you actually make uh, you know, marketing advantages, or you know, if uh, we were in Europe just last week and, uh, and talking to a very large hostel chain that does sleep studies, and they've got a very large, uh, you can imagine that it takes six hours to do a sleep study and how much data you actually gather uh, for six hours. And how do you get access to that data? How do you move that gigabytes of data with a 10 gig or 40 gig architecture which doesn't slow it down, but then how do you make sense of it is, is when our Quest uh, tools start to come into gear. So I, I think it's a combination of a network uh, uh, compute and then the business analytics that that really helps that and, and some of the solutions we have there is, is really phenomenal. Okay, so Armagon, uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, Going to bring this interview to a close. This uh, is Stu Miniman. All right, I'm, I'm Dave Vellante. We're here at Dell World. Uh, this is the Cube. We'll be right back with our next guest. <laughs>